Hello everybody, AJ Rizek here, and today we're taking a look at Opera Internet Browser. Now, this is version 31, which is the most recent stable version, and uh, you can install it by going to their website, and uh, that's actually where I'm at right now, and I'm looking at this with the Opera Browser. You can see they've got versions for Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, you've also got links here to their, uh, if you want to play around with their beta versions, not entirely stable yet, but uh, if you want a little preview of upcoming things, you can play around with that. Uh, and Opera also has Opera Mail, uh, which unfortunately, at least as of right now, is only available for Windows, so those on Linux and on Mac are kind of out, uh, out of luck for the Opera Mail right now, but kind of I'm kind of waiting to see what the if they uh, if they finally do port that over to uh, other platforms um, as well as having the browser for uh, for your computer you can also get it for your mobile or for your tablet nice thing about that uh, is syncing you can go and sync your bookmarks open tabs all that kind of stuff um, from your from your computer to your to your tablet to your uh, to your phone um, so uh, it, you know it's nice having a browser that is available on all those different platforms so anyway this is where you want to come to uh, to get the uh, to, to download uh, Opera to if you are on Linux, some distributions may have it in their repositories. If you are on an Arch-based distribution, I'm pretty sure that it is in the uh, AUR, so you can pull it down from there. If you are on a Ubuntu-based distribution, you can download a Debian file from here, and uh, you know it's a simple click the Debian file, and boom, it installs for you, and you're ready to go. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the features of Opera Browser. Here we are at the opening page of Opera, and as you can see, we have the infamous speed dial. Uh, they've got a few things pre-set up for you. Uh, Facebook, Amazon, eBay, Yahoo, and then a Google search at the top. Of course, you can go and add your own sites. Just go and click on Add a Site. It will actually pull up some recent stuff that you visited so you can just go and do a little click and and add it that way or you can go and type in the address add it in that in that way so you can really customize this uh, the the speed dial page to just the way that you want it get all the stuff that uh, you know you commonly visit which is uh, I think a pretty neat way to uh, to have an opening page of uh, of your browser ever since version 24 which was about a year ago uh, Opera has been based on Chromium and it has made a world of difference in performance. Speed is up, there's less crashing, um, you know, things render correctly. I mean, it's just been an altogether uh, improvement for Opera. Um, as far as speed, I don't think you'll notice any difference between this and, say, uh, Chrome or Chromium or Firefox. When you look at some of the speed tests posted up on the internet, yeah, there's a little bit of differences there. Um, real world, I don't think you're going to notice. I mean, you know, you click on a page and boom, it opens right up. You know, everything's nice and snappy. Um, no issues rendering anything. The one issue I did run into uh, had to do with going to YouTube. Let me go open up YouTube here. Um, And it ended up being a flash player issue, and, and here here's the deal. Um, you know, I figured that everything was going to work correctly with regard to playing YouTube videos because I've already got Chromium installed, and I've got uh, and it's got you know the, the flash player plugin installed for Chromium. So boom, we're fine on that. Well, I went to Opera and could not play a video, and it acted just like. You know, I don't have a flash player installed. I'm like, hmm, what's the deal? So did a little digging, and basically what it comes down to is um, I was using the. Uh, let me take a look at my notes here. It was the uh, the Adobe Flash uh, plugin, which works fine on Chromium. 
unfortunately it doesn't play nice with Opera. With Opera you need to go and install the Pepper Flash plugin. Um, not a big deal but something that uh, you know if you're on a Ubuntu based distribution you will probably run into the same thing. Um, you know by the way I'm running uh, Ubuntu GNOME uh, 1504 right here um, and uh, you know that, that, that's that's the the one issue I ran into. So anyway, after I installed Pepper Flash, boom, everything was fine, and it kind of had me scratching my head a little bit. It was like, okay, why is uh, you know why was the Adobe plugin uh, you know playing nice with Chromium but not with Opera? But anyway, it's fixed, and uh, you know just a little just a little not really problem, but something to be aware of if you are running this on Ubuntu. Much like Chrome and Firefox, we have quite a variety of extensions, themes, that sort of thing that you can install into Opera. And here we are on the uh, extensions page, and just kind of scrolling through here, you can see there's just, uh, uh, you know, there's tons and tons of stuff there. According to the company website, there's over a thousand extensions available. Um, I don't know how that compares to the numbers from Firefox and uh, and Chrome, but you know you can see there's a lot of stuff there and a lot of the stuff that you're used to seeing as far as extension go uh, the stuff that you're used to seeing at on Firefox and and on Chrome you'll probably find either the same extension here or an equivalent um, you know a lot of the stuff that I, f I I use on Chromium I'm finding I'm finding the same thing here like this Evernote clearly I use that all the time um, you know that's here got ad blocker um, you know just all kinds of stuff there and you know besides uh, besides extensions to add functionality you've got some theming um, you see we've got some wallpapers there and just kind of scrolling through there's you know quite a variety there rather than a standard menu across the top bar what we have is if you go and click on the little opera up in the corner that gives you a drop-down menu, and you know if you're used to uh, used to Chrome, you will recognize the menu here. It's it's essentially the same: uh, new tab, new window, new private window, bookmarks, um, page or zoom, print, uh, quick launch or quick link to our speed dial, um, the discover. It's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, if you click on the discover, it'll show you uh, I guess you can consider it more popular stuff that's that's cruising around on the internet right now and you can pick some stuff by categories there but anyway uh, so uh, we've got the discover there's there's uh, adding bookmarks there's where we can synchronize and we can take a look at our downloads our history we've got our settings there our themes extension manager here's the link for getting more extensions um, Opera Turbo, basically Opera Turbo, uh, it's mostly useful if you have a low spec computer. Um, basically, it compresses web pages uh, for for quicker loading. Um, got some uh, some other tools there: clear browsing data, import bookmarks and settings. Um, and I was looking at that earlier. You can go and import um, bookmarks and settings from Firefox, Chrome, an older version of Opera. Um, or you can import a uh, books bookmark HTML file and then while we're on here we'll just take a look at the settings real quick this is our standard settings page um, most of it is pretty standard stuff where that that uh, you'll see on say uh, chromium um, uh, layouts a little bit different than what you would see on on Firefox but most of the same options are there um, so we've got options for our browser uh, for how we deal with various things on our website, how we're going to display. You can customize the fonts if you like, the page zoom, uh, how you deal with images, JavaScript, plugins, pop-ups. Come down here to privacy. Fair number of privacy options as well. And then a quick link to the Opera help. So I've been playing around with Opera for a couple days now. 
Um, you know, really liking what I'm seeing here. Um, other than the running into that one, uh, the, the pepper flash issue, really have not had any issues with the browser, especially with not being able to render stuff or, you know, it slowing down, crashing on me, that kind of thing. So really been happy about that. Um, and you know, before I did, I played around with Opera, I was, I was, uh, working with uh, Slimjet, um, you know, you may have seen my my review of Slimjet, another really nice Chromium-based browser, and, you know, it's it's kind of got me rethinking about what my primary, um, what my primary uh, uh, browser is going to be, you know, for the longest time it has been uh, uh, Chromium, but, uh, you know, having looked at these two recently, really like what I'm seeing. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know, maybe rethinking what the, what the main browser is. By the way, let me drag this over for those of you that are interested in RAM usage. Here's that uh, little chart of RAM use by browser, uh, that I've been working on for a while. And, uh, Opera came in, this version of Opera came in at 145 megs of RAM. That is with one browser window open open yeah uh open um which put it in a little slightly heavier than slimjet um difference was is that when uh when i went and set up the synchronization you uh with slimjet once you did that once you synchronized with your google account uh slimjet went from 117 megs to 340 opera uh, you you had this initial spike of of RAM usage as it was synchronizing, but once the sync took place, it dropped right back down into this 145 range. So um, definitely not a lightweight when it comes to when it comes to uh, um, memory uses, but it uh, I would definitely consider it a middleweight. Uh, it is slightly heavier in Firefox, which ran about a you know, 107, 110, somewhere in that kind of kind of range, um, but much lighter than than Chrome and Chromium, which you can see is up here. Chromium at 348, Chrome itself at 535. Um, Maxon Maxon browser was at 360, so uh, much lighter than those. Now, you know, if you are on you know a a computer that's running four or eight or sixteen gigs of ram that amount of ram usage it, it's no big deal but if you're on a computer that only has two gigs of ram uh, running a browser that uses a half a gig just with a single window open that may kill you if you're trying to trying to multitask there so uh you know, going with some of these other browsers may help you out on the, on their memory use. But anyway, uh, like I said, really enjoyed working with this browser. And I don't know, I'm going to keep it on this uh, on this distribution for a while, play around with it some more, and uh, and, and just see uh, see where it goes. Who knows? It may end up being my uh, my new preferred browser. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the review and uh, give us a big old thumbs up if you liked it as always leave comments questions all that kind of stuff down below i'll get to it as soon as possible uh upcoming reviews we will be looking at uh, the vidaldi uh, uh browser i looked at that once before back when it had its first uh technical preview out well they're now on technical preview version i think four and uh you know, been playing around with that a little bit, so we'll we'll be looking at that soon. And then I will also have a review of the most recent version of Sea Monkey, uh, which is an entire internet suite. Uh, might be interesting and 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 definitely an option for those who are using Firefox and Thunderbird already. It might be a nice option for you. Um, uh, you know, definitely an alternative to those. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, once again, thanks a lot for checking out this video, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.